Hi everybody, welcome to this demo of the IT Harvest Analyst dashboard, the only platform for researching the entire cybersecurity industry. As you can see from the landing page when you first log in, we track 3,753 cybersecurity vendors, that's worldwide, um, and one of the topics that we'll be covering in a minute is the products that we've been ingesting. We have coverage of 9,387 products, and our estimates uh, going forward as we collect all the products from the remaining vendors is that that number is going to be 18,000 uh, by the time we're done. So vendors, products, number of investments in those vendors, of course, these are only investments in vendors that are still around, right? If, if they're historical uh, they're not included in the dashboard. And then we have daily insights so you can quickly check to see if there's any uh, M&A activity, uh, any new investments. You can see that scroll here. So just a quick real uh, check-in, I guess, uh, the industry. If you've been researching uh, vendors recently, Juniper Network's of interest because, of course, it's be being acquired by HPE. Uh, you can find that here. And then you can find uh, recent exports of the data and quickly dig into some of your watch lists as well. But most of the activity, and I know uh, where I go right away every single day, is to the vendor's search page. And this is where you start to formulate a way to answer a question. A, a question could be as simple as, uh, as quite often asked, is how many vendors are in Israel? Mind you, these are vendors who claim headquarters to be in, in Israel. But a quick search, <clears throat> one shows you the results of 266, um, but gives you this complete list of those, which you can page through with these arrows here. And you can sort each column up and down. You might want to sort on your found, founded um, to get a feel for that. <clears throat> so this is, goes back to 2007. And obviously, up to current day, uh, you can sort on uh, year-to-date growth. So that would be growth through uh, uh, March 1st, or the last three months growth, um, or you can find the uh, growth for last year as well. So that's the result of a vendor search. But you might say, well, okay, I'm very interested in these vendors, um, and I need to do some further uh, reporting on them uh, or you know, analysis, so I'm going to export all of those to a spreadsheet. And here you could just select, well, I'm interested in the categories, certainly interested in, uh, well, we know there is Israel, so we don't need to look at that, but I will want to check out their homepage, so we'll include that. And I'll probably be interested in total funding, the growth in 2023, and number of headcount on February 1st. And then you just export that to a spreadsheet. You'll get a message that pops up over here in your mail when that's exported it takes a while because there's so many uh, vendors here um and then you, in the meantime you know that's being handled in the background you can go back to doing your search so let's say well we're not interested in a country as much as we are in categories so this is the differentiator between the analyst dashboard from it harvest and any other database out there. So I don't know if you're using CBI Insights or TrackXN or PitchBook or Crunchbase. Um, none of those have categorizations at this granularity. We've got 17 major categories, so you can get to API security right away. On some other platforms, all you've got is maybe four categories between endpoint and network, uh, et cetera. But on top of that, we have 660 subcategories. So definitely the... Uh, product type that you're looking for is going to end up in those categories. Uh, of course, there are always new categories, and we uh, track them initially with tags. So if Gartner comes up with uh, you know, yet another acronym for a, a, a vendor space, we can just add that as a, as a tag, and then you just search on cloud security posture management um, or cloud workload protection platform. Um, we can pull all those in based on those uh, tags that we've got. But you may, so you may have selected a general category of data security. And of course, that's going to be several hundred vendors because it includes all the encryption and all the DLP 
type of vendors. But you say, well, I'm only interested in those that have received uh, at least $10 million. So I'll put that in there. And probably uh, have more than 90 employees. So these are going to be, you know, legitimate, large, com growing companies. Uh, and we just do a quick search to see how many there are. It's an iterative process. You just keep going, okay, 51 vendors. Um, so those might be worth looking at if you're generating a report, a data security space. Um, and you can look at their subcategories as well when you go back to it. So that was data security. You might also look at um, their growth rates. So out of those 91, um, how much did the, they grow last year? I put that filter in the, uh, down here and say anybody who grew in 2023 uh, more than 15% is going to be extremely interesting. Uh, you know, because 2023 was a tough year for a lot of vendors. Um, a lot of them were running out of cash when the Silicon Valley Bank failed, and then they were just frozen in time uh, and told not to spend more, so they were laying people off. These 14 vendors in data security uh, grew more than 50% last year, so you can quickly jump through those and find high flyers like Sierra. This is a good opportunity to uh, click through to one of those vendors. So for every single vendor in the database, you can go to the, the vendor page, and you'll find a description of what Sierra does. You'll see that they're in uh, data security and data management. Uh, they're also tagged with DSPM. Uh, you can look at their growth curve over the years. Um, so we've tracked them since January 2021, and they're growing uh, very healthily, 5% so far this year. Uh, last year, they grew 165%, so they're on a roll. And note some of these inflection points, you know, where they start to peak up in that. They're, those usually align closely with uh, funding. So sure enough, Zyara took in $100 million in June of 2023. Um, and that's led to some of, some of their growth. Um, but we also have any interesting information on their health. Um, some of that is based on that growth in headcount, but also their funding level, uh, how much hiring they're doing, uh, leadership, whether or not leadership had previous roles at cybersecurity companies, um, and then our revenue calculations to show positive numbers. So, so Sayera at 52 is actually extremely healthy uh, compared to the norm uh, or the average of 14% in the data security space. We capture Glassdoor rankings, so you can get a feel for that. Uh, if they have G2 coverage, we try and capture that. Number of LinkedIn followers uh, is an indicator. Of, really, it's a measure of uh, how well they do at marketing, um, but also the measure of what the community is following and thinks that they're interesting. Um, and also uh, web visitors and how much that changes month to month. So it's right now it's peaking uh, or spiking again uh, with a tw almost a 20% gain. Um, under products, we keep track of uh, their primary product and all the features associated with it. Uh, if you want to look at a company with a lot of products, you just go to Fortinet, for instance, and you'll see the, you know, once again, we've, we've got the uh, growth data. And note that it's growing a little bit flat, came off a little bit uh, fairly recently. But if you go to products, uh, they have one of the biggest product portfolios of any vendor, um, especially, uh, probably, yeah, I would say because of their focus on cybersecurity, this might be the biggest cybersecurity portfolio. Um, for the most part, Fortinet uh, develops their own uh, products. They don't grow by acquisitions <clears throat> like some of their competitors. And you can just sort through all the products. And I argue that it is faster to go through Fortinet's products using our platform than it is using their website. Uh, so when you uh, click on a product name, Forty Mail, you get the product name, description, uh, tags that we've tagged it with, uh, features, and then how the product lines up with MITRE attack techniques, in this case, phishing and data manipulation. So let's go back to uh, the vendor filter page. See just a few more filters 
that we have. Um, so certainly year founded. Um, those actually go back to about 1764 because there is one company in Germany that was founded that long ago. Uh, you search on conferences. If you're uh, going to a conference, uh, you can quickly you know, look for uh, RSA and see how many vendors are going to this. Now, <clears throat> can't remember if I've got the search for uh, everything else. For the data securities, no. So we had cleared it. So we've got 404 vendors going to uh, exhibit at RSA this May. That's um, different than the numbers you can count or download from the RSA website because the RSA usually has about 100 uh, organizations that are not cybersecurity vendors, right? There'll be resellers, distributors, consultants, and professional societies. And of course, the NSA and FBI have booths and other na national organizations have booths at RSA. But sure makes the job easier when you're trying to decide who to visit when you're uh, visiting San Francisco, uh, whose booth to drop by. Uh, you have the whole list and you can sort them and filter them and export it and take it with you. So super valuable tool. Along the lines of valuable tools is our news feed. <clears throat> this is data that is uh, captured for us by Feedly. They tag it with press release, uh, M&A, funding, etc., and then we put it in these separate uh, uh, tabs so you can find that. So you can, you can basically go through this every morning, as I do, look for the news, um, do what you can with it. If you're an industry analyst, you are going to, you know, post it to LinkedIn, for instance, or just get attention for what's going on out there. Okay, so <clears throat> that's the vendor search capability, and but we've got some more. We've got product search. Product search is very cool. So of those nine thousand some products, you can search on them by keyword. <clears throat> so if you get the question of how many products are you know, have the keyword SIM in it, uh, it's probably going to give you a pretty good collection of all the SIM products, right? Because every SIM product is going to mention it. Um, <clears throat> sometimes, you know, they connect to the SIM. But even so, there are 180 products. If you were doing a survey of SIM products, uh, a total addressable market for SIM products, uh, this would be where you'd start. You'd look at all 180 of these products, page through them, once again, with the uh, left and right arrows up here. You just now note that we also have a search tool for uh, for MITRE tech techniques. So you might, I'm just going to randomly grab one of these. We might look for um, uh, data from configuration repositories. There's seven results for that. And you can see where we're going with this when, you know, ultimately when you'll be able to take your existing portfolio of products, find them, note that you've got them, and then identify <clears throat> how much coverage you have for every MITRE ATT&CK technique, as well as, you know, highlight the ones you don't have any coverage for. That might be a really good indication of where to beef up your security stack. Now, one more uh, to go through here <clears throat> is our investments. Uh, search capability. Um, generally, you can search by rounds. <clears throat> you can search by investors. Um, I like to look at the rounds. Um, so this is most recent rounds. <clears throat> and it, it just a good, gives you the ability to say, hey, <clears throat> how many rounds were there so far this year? Um, and then add them up and you'll know uh, how we're doing. We're still slightly behind uh, last year's uh, 2023's investment, uh, um, I guess, momentum. So we'll see what happens uh, as things free up in the spring. We've got the ability to uh, analyze job listings. So these are job listings from LinkedIn. You can search them. If anybody's looking for a particular job, uh, feel free to reach out to me anytime. I will be more than happy to run searches and kind of walk you through some of the, some of the good ones. I uh, actually found my daughter was looking for a job in um, instructional design, which is a category I didn't know. And I, had, I could do a search. And I found, you know, six or seven instructional design openings at cybersecurity vendors. 
Um, but you might be looking for VP sales and a position because I actually get a lot of requests from people asking for that. Um, and you can quickly see, you know, 13 job postings. Uh, some of them are repeats, but our kid is looking for uh, a VP of sales uh, as is extra hot. So you zip through these and it's a lot easier because otherwise on LinkedIn, it's a lot harder for a job searcher um, the, the, who's determined they want to work with a security vendor to, you don't know all the security vendors, so you couldn't check all their sites. We do know all the security vendors, so we can check all their sites. So we've done that work for you. Super valuable. So uh, one last uh, thing I want to show you is our market insights. Uh, this is just a way to get a quick uh, grasp of where the industry is going. Uh, we've got headcount growth and funding for uh, the previous three years. And you can look at it that way, or I find the insights by category is more, more valuable. And you can go from email security to threat intelligence. Uh, these are our 17 categories. And you can see the growth over a year and uh, the number of vendors and market share by size of those vendors. So sale point capturing that in identity. So if you've got any questions, uh, feel free to reach out. Go to dashboard.itharvest.com. Uh, you can click on the you know, get a demo button and we'll get back to you immediately.